Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today is uh, Wednesday, January 25th and it is snowing out here in southeastern lower Michigan. I, uh, I shoveled my drive and I've already got probably another inch on it. You know, it's been a while since I posted my last video. I have been really busy with uh, my day job, working Monday through Friday, and then, uh, of course, home improvement projects I'm working on. But this is the much anticipated second video in a series of three regarding what I did to upgrade my ground tackle. In episode 34, I discussed the process of what I did to buy the anchor chain that I bought. In this episode, I'm going to talk about and cover what I did to buy the anchor that I bought for chopsticks, which will be part of the primary ground tackle system. I hope you find it informative and interesting. Please take a moment now, if you can, to hit that subscribe button, tap the notifications bell, leave a comment, and I appreciate you taking your time to watch. And this is a picture of the CQR anchor that came with chopsticks when I bought her. As you can see, there was about six foot of a chain that was coated in rubber. And that piece of line there is a line that I would use to secure the anchor while it was in the bowsprit to a cleat that was on deck. And in case you were wondering, I went to Google as I often do and did a search. A CQR stands for one of three things, either coastal quick release, Clyde quick release, or uh, I guess it was rebranded by Lumar and called Secure. After watching numerous videos, I came to realize that CQR anchors just don't perform very well in a variety of conditions, as is evident from this Google search that I did. In addition to that, based upon all the advancements that have come about with the design of modern anchors, um, I knew that if I was gonna keep the CQR at all, maybe it would be for a secondary anchor. Of course, now the challenge was, what anchor will I buy? So I did a little research on the different types of anchors just to see. So there we have six different anchor designs. Then I did another search on the best sailboat anchors. And you can see the seven different ones listed here, but in a majority of the videos that I watched, I kept hearing at least two names, Rachna and Mantis. And those are the ones that I started searching for first. My next step was to go to the Rachna website, which I must admit, I found very easy to navigate, very informative, and I liked the story of how Rachna Anchors got started. Of course, next I made my way to the Mantis website and for some reason, it was a little bit more difficult to navigate. I'm not sure why, but I will admit, they have a wide array of products and accessories that I found not only interesting, but they looked like were of high quality. So in addition to Rachna and Mantis, I kept seeing a new name pop up, and I believe it's kind of like a newer product, and that is called Ultra Anchor. So of course, following suit, I made my way over to the Ultra Anchor website. And one of the things that stood out to me is the anchor is completely 316 stainless. It looks really nice, but it was extremely pricey. It was about three to four times the price of a similar weighted Rachna or Mantis anchor. So now I had my three choices. Do I go with the Rachna? Do I go with the Mantis? or do I go with the Ultra? As you can see from the Google searches above, rock anchors are manufactured in China, but they follow strict quality control procedures that were developed at their office in Vancouver, Canada. Mantis anchors are also manufactured in China. One of the noticeable differences about the Mantis anchor is that you can disassemble it, which makes it really nice for stowage. And last but not least, we have the Ultra anchor, which is manufactured in Turkey. One of the most noticeable differences about the Ultra Anchor is that 3 16 stainless steel, hand polished finished. The anchor looks really nice. And in many of the videos I watched where they rated it against other anchors, it was rated as superior as far as holding quality in almost every type of condition. And now it all came down to price. Do I go with the Ultra Anchor 
at just shy of $3,000 once we add in shipping and tax? Or do I go with the Mantis M2 at close to $850 once we add in shipping and tax? And last but not least, we have the Rockna Vulcan Anchor at just shy of $690 once we add in tax and no shipping. Now it was time to make a decision. And honestly, the decision made itself for many reasons. And I decided to go with the 55 pound Rockna Vulcan Anchor. And I chose this one for several reasons. First being price point. Second, reputation. Third, I liked how easy the website was to navigate. And fourth, the story behind the person who invented the anchor, Peter Smith. I would encourage you to go to the website, watch his story, and see how the anchor has continued to evolve. Okay, I just heard the UPS guy pull up. And it looks like he brought my brand new Rocknell Vulcan anchor. Caught him as he was walking back down the drive. And I said, you should have just pulled up my drive. Instead of huffing this thing up, he said, ah, it wasn't too much. He said, what is that? It looks like a plow. And I said, no, it's not a plow. It's an anchor for my 38-foot uh, catch rig sailboat. So this is cool. This is the kind of the way it came. You see here, let me see. Vulcan, it's a 25 kilogram or 55 pound. You can see all the Yeah, this thing's awesome. Well, I can't wait to get it on the boat. Like how they covered up the tip to protect it. Let's pull this off kind of like an unboxing. This thing looks pretty beefy. Okay, so you can see all the galvanized coating and in this plow, how beefy this thing is. Well, there she is, brand new Vulcan 55 pound anchor.